I have an entire PCB factory on my bench. I can make perfect PCBs with my fiber laser, and I can populate entire panels in minutes with my Lumen PNP, and then reflow them with my reflow oven. Wait, wait, wait. But what about paste? For rapid prototyping boards, I tried making stencils and it sucked. I tried using a bunch of materials and looked into a different type of laser, but it just sucked. What if I didn't need a stencil? I already made this paste extruder head for the Lumen PMP, and we've already done some really cool stuff with it, but it wasn't easy to put paste onto PCBs automatically until today. I built a Gerber processing, G-code generating, machine vision implemented website that does the whole thing. The Chrome tab itself connects to the Lumen and performs an entire pasting job automatically with machine vision fiducial calibration. It's so cool. So many people have been using our paste extruder, weird, interesting things that NDAs keep me from talking about, but a lot of people have been asking us for an easier way to just drop a PCB in and have it paste the board for you. And this process is only really easy and useful if you have automatic alignment. Every time you mount a board to the machine, it might sit just a little bit different and manually realigning it stinks. So for this tool to actually be useful, it has to be able to automatically find the exact position of the board every time, which comes with fiducials. Fiducials, the little dots on a PCB that help camera find out where the board is in space so all the placements are really accurate. If I could find a way to get this web tool to use the fiducials of a board to do the alignment, that's great. So this tool literally runs OpenCV running in WebAssembly. <laughs> So an entire bundled version of OpenCV is running in this Chrome tab, processing the image that comes in from your webcam, finds the circular fiducial, and can do the calibration based on that. So this uses all the exact same hardware in the original paste extruder I made in a video a few months back. The only difference is I'm using a slightly different nozzle tip here to get a little bit more precise dispensing. These are lure lock tips, which are ubiquitous and you can get them anywhere, and they work in the syringes that came with the kit. But aside from that, it's same stock everything. I have the web tool loaded up here and I'm connected to my Lumen. Already the tool is looking and sees all the cameras I have attached to my laptop and it will by default pick the top camera for the Lumen if it finds it. So I'm gonna do that and hit connect. Tell it to connect to the serial port that's also connected. Hit go. And you can see now I have a video feed coming in from the top camera. So first off, I'm just gonna home the machine. And I added a cool feature where it will do a visual home, where it will jog the camera to the homing fiducial and reset its homing position based on the machine vision fiducial detection of the homing fiducial. Check it out. And it has now set the home position based on where I found the fiducial. All right, first thing, I'm gonna select a paste layer. So here's the paste layer for the FTP board. So I'm gonna load that in and I'm also gonna select a front mask layer. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit load Gerbers. So now you can see it has loaded in all the positions into this canvas element here, into this view. Every red dot here is a pasting location and every blue dot is a mask area that does not have paste. So it's a potential fiducial. So you can see at the bottom, it says, please click on FID1 in the display. This little blue dot right here happens to be FID1 based on looking at my board. This is the only bit of information you need to give it that we can't quite pull out just from the Gerbers. So I'm gonna click that. And you can see when I click it, it turns green to show me that it worked. Now I'm gonna click on FID2 right there and then same thing for FID3 and then it will Will load in all the positions from the paste file and it even knows which ones are the fiducials at the bottom but it doesn't yet know where the board is so now i'm going to click on get rough board position and this is just telling it basically where it is so it can do a fiducial calibration to find exactly where it is and this is going to prompt me to jog to fid one so i could use the jog controls down here in the bottom right but i added a cool feature where you can just click on the camera view and it will jog to that location Isn't that awesome? So I'm just gonna jog down to FID1. All right, so here's FID1. I could try and click to get really exact, but I also added a handy little button which will just find a fiducial in the camera view and jog to it. So there, it just finds it and jogs to it. It's a little shy because my pixels per millimeter is intentionally a little small so that when we run it a few times, it'll always converge and we won't overshoot. Cool, so there we go. And it doesn't even have to be exact. It just has to be kind of close. So I'm gonna click this next button to move on to the next step, which is now gonna ask me to jog to fit two. Same thing, jog to fit in view, just to make it a little easier for myself. That's close enough. I'll hit next and then do the same thing for FID3. This just needs to happen the first time you set up a job. And then after that, the software will know exactly where to look for your board and then it's all fiducial call from there. Cool, there we go. Now I'm gonna hit next. Now it wants me to jog the pace extruder tip to just barely be touching the board. This is setting the Z height for your job. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna jog my nozzle tip over and I'm gonna bring it down so it's just barely touching. 
it doesn't matter what X, Y position you're at, you're just setting your Z. Cool, there we go. So now I'm gonna hit next and it'll jog up out of the way. And now you can see all my positions have been updated based on where I've grabbed the position. Now it knows where the board is. So if I click on this little circle icon here, it will actually jog to the pad automatically based on this calibration we just did. Now, if you really roughly grabbed your fiducial calibration positions, it's not gonna be perfect because you didn't grab your fiducials perfectly. So let's say it's off a little bit. Let's say you run a job, you put a new one in, but you don't put it quite in the same place. I'm gonna just mess with the position a little bit here. I put it in a little bit differently. Now I'm gonna hit perform fid cal and it's automatically gonna fix this. So now it's gonna go jog off to fid one. It's gonna find it, do a couple just to make sure we converge to the actual location. Same thing for fid two. And same thing for fid three. And you can see now our positions are all updated. So now if I go and I look at some of these pads, now they're perfect in this new skewed position. So you can just pull a board out, put a new one in, hit calibrate, it'll find out where it is, and you're ready to paste the job again. Isn't that so cool? Isn't that awesome? Nozzle offset cal is included. This is a little utility that just sets the offset between the top camera and the nozzle tip. And this is really important because all these positions that we're getting in right here are based on where the camera's looking, not where the nozzle tip's gonna go. So we need to tell the tool how far away are those two things so it knows what offset to apply to make sure it pace it correctly. This is really easy to do if you just click the nozzle offset cal button under the camera view. It'll ask you to jog to any fiducial. I'll just jog to one that's in the job because it's easy. There we go. I'm gonna hit next. And now it'll jog the nozzle tip to be close to that fiducial, but not exact. And then you jog to make it perfectly on top of it, which I'm gonna do now. And this will set that offset in the job. The settings for the job are at the bottom. Right now I have dispense degrees, retract degrees, and dwell milliseconds. This is how much once the nozzle tip comes down to its position, how much does it dispense? How much does it retract? This is in degrees of the main stepper motor. So it's kind of arbitrary. The ones in here by default work great for GC50 in my experience for like a 603 pads. And then dwell milliseconds is how long does it wait after it's done the dispense and retract. It'll wait a little bit to let the pace kind of seat and then it'll go up and do the next one. And then you run the job. Before running it, I also recommend priming the nozzle a little bit. If you just start dispensing paste right out of the gate, it's going to take a little bit before paste actually starts coming out. Some is going to drip out the end after your last job. So you wanna prime it and make sure that there's a little bit of pressure in the syringe before you start it. So I'll extrude a little bit till I see some starting to come out, give it a quick wipe and then hit play. And then all your early placements actually get paste instead of kind of nothing's coming out until a little bit of time progresses and then it starts pasting them all. <laughs> And if at any point throughout a job you wanna stop, just click the next button in the little information window at the bottom and it'll stop. Jog out of the way so you can do what you gotta do. If there's a placement you wanna kill, you can just hit the little X and it'll get rid of it. Or if you wanna capture a new position, you can use this button here and wherever the nozzle tip is, it'll just add it to the row. I don't recommend mixing these because the capture position is based on where the nozzle tip is and all the placement positions from a Gerber are based on the camera. So don't mix them. <laughs> Either do a Gerber job or do a manually captured job. Okay, so after you have all this stuff set up, you don't wanna do this every single time. You can just hit export job at the bottom, test job, and it will save it to your computer. You can re-import this later. Watch, right now I'm just gonna reload the page and I'm gonna import the job we just made and everything comes right back. I gotta reconnect, of course. But you can see, I can jog to all these positions. They're still all totally accurate. So you don't have to redo all this work. You can just load up a job, settings are included, positions are included, calibration, fiducial search locations are included. It's all in this one job. And that's it. I'll take this board and put it under the microscope so you can see all the pasting pads here. This is after quite a bit of tuning with GC50. As of right now, I have nine dispense degrees, five retraction degrees, and 100 millisecond delay, which is what the default value is when you load the page yourself. But depending on your paste or your temperature in your room or whatever, or how much paste you want to actually dispense, you're gonna tweak those settings. But this is what gave me the best results. Okay, so this works really well, but there are still some asterisks. I know that many of you are probably thinking, solder paste is designed to be stenciled. The formulation of it literally has stenciling in mind. It's not meant to be extruded. This is not the ideal application method. And that is true. But I'm using a special type of paste called GC50, which is a variant of GC10 made by Loctite, which is what we use here. It is the best solder paste ever. And GC50 is specifically designed to be extruded. These little guys were super handy when filling up the syringe. This is a double-ended lure lock connector. And if you have a syringe of GC50 or some other kind of solder paste, which really often have a lure lock tip, you can just remove the cap, load in the adapter. You can just attach it onto the other side and push the paste from one into the other. And it works 
works pretty darn well. We started including these with the pace extruder kits and they're pretty easy to get yourself if you wanna just get a whole bunch. That being said, it's never going to be quite as crispy precise as a stencil solder paste, unless you have the tiniest little tip and the most precise paste movement control, it's not gonna give you as fine feature resolution, it's not gonna be quite as sharp, but if you're gonna dispense paste, this is the kind of stuff you wanna use. For example, some footprints like really fine pitch pads can be tricky with a paste applicator like this. Let's say you have a whole bunch of pads for legs like on a TQFP or something like that. Instead of putting a dot of paste in the center of each one of those pads, you could instead stagger where you put the dot still on the pad but separate it a little bit so that it's much less likely they're all gonna bleed together. A little mod to your file or even the job file, it's just a JSON file, it's not hard to edit manually. Little things like that can help you get a lot of mileage out of this technique. It's just not gonna be quite as good as a stainless steel laser cut electro polished stencil. There's a reason that's what the industry uses. But for pretty close to as good, no material consumption, all software, and really fast, it's not too bad. I am still in the process of tuning all this for 0402. I know a lot of people have been asking about it. I have some much smaller lure lock tips in the mail right now and a couple specific test boards with a 402 coming in that I'll also be able to test with. I think it's possible. I think with tuning, you could probably get it pretty consistent. 0603 was not terribly hard to tune, but I believe 0402 is in play here which is pretty cool. You can test all this out yourself right now with your own Lumen PMP and Pace Extruder. This tool is at pace.opulo.io. It's also like everything else we do here at Opulo, open source. So if you wanna go mess around with it, tweak it, have it do something else, make a PR, add a feature, report a bug. There's also a link in the description to the GitHub repository. And you can start pasting PCBs with this today if you want. If you're using the Paste Extruder for something weird, something interesting, or even just using it to make PCBs, please let me know. I am so curious about why so many people have been buying this. <laughs> and some people have gotten back to us. I've emailed a whole bunch of people asking what they're using it for. I know NDAs, I get it. You're doing some proprietary, you can't share it, but oh man, I'm so curious. I wanna know. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. It helps me out tremendously. And go check out the Lumen PMP. There's a link in the description as well. All right, time to put goop on board with computers, programmatically.